Coach, if you'd like to go ahead with an opening statement, then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, well, obviously, we're looking forward um, to the season, like everybody else. Um, we had a very good trip um, overseas to Spain this summer. I thought that was good for our team, kind of transition in a way um, from the two departures that we had, Rafael Davis and A.J. Hammonds, that um, had very good careers for us. But just trying to, to get some of the new guys. We had one kid, Redshirt, Basil Smotherman. We had two additions in Carson Edwards and Spike Albrecht. And just trying to, to work together and get our chemistry um, where it needs to be. Um, but we're very excited about this team. You know, we have good size. Um, we got a really versatile player in Vince Edwards. Obviously, he mentioned Caleb Swanigan, who we expect to be one of the better players in our league to go along with Isaac Haas um, at the center. And then we got a lot of guys that understand the game, that can dribble, pass, and shoot, um, that make for good offense. I, I think it's going to be real important for us to be a good team defensive group. Um, especially with uh, the departure of the, the two guys that I mentioned um, who did a very good job on that end of the floor. Um, we're going to have to do a good job of keeping the ball in front of us. Um, but I am excited about that, the, the group of guards that we have. I think they have a lot of the same qualities, understand the game of basketball, can knock down shots, can take care of the basketball, and uh, just really looking forward to this season. Thank you, Coach. We'll open up the floor for questions. Let's go on the aisle. Five rows back. Hey, Matt, uh, Pete DiPremio, Fort Wayne News Sentinel. When, when you have a non-conference schedule that's uh, so intriguing, including Villanova, do you, do you change in t things in terms of preparation? Do you, ha do you approach things differently? How, do, how does the, the competitive nature of your non-conference schedule affect your preseason preparations? Well, I think the, the biggest thing that we did, we struggled a little bit last year, and I think we'll be better with our personnel this year, but we struggled after getting leads late in games of taking care of the basketball, which you saw a lot in the NCAA tournament from three or four teams who also had the same difficulty. So we scheduled um, West Virginia in a scrimmage. That might be the most important game on our schedule um, just because of what it's going to do for us and, and help us prepare for the season. And then obviously when you play teams like Villanova and Louisville and Notre Dame, um, Arizona State, and then we're in the Cancun Challenge um, with a pretty tough field. So we feel like we've got a non-conference you know, schedule that will help prepare us uh, for conference play. Um, but they're, like you said, anytime you got a chance to play the, the national champions um, on your schedule and then play someone who was the national champions, I think, three years ago in Louisville, um, that's, that's a pretty good non-conference to, to throw in Notre Dame, who's been the lead eight the past two years. So you know, we, we feel like we have a very, very challenging non-conference slate. Let's go left-hand side, fourth row. Uh, Jeff Rab Johns from Pigs.com. I'm curious, what were the two or three key things of the NBA feedback that Swanigan got, and how will that impact how he plays this season? Well, I don't think it'll impact, um, you know, how he plays. I, I think it's individually, you know, you try to work on some things. Um, for him, it's, it's going from um, a center um, to really a, a guy that can play the four and the five. Last year we played him predominantly at the four. Um, how many minutes Isaac Haas can play is still a question for us. Obviously he was very efficient in 14, 15 minutes so far in his career, but we'd like for him to play more than that and try to get to 20 or 25. When he's not in, then Swanigan will play the five. So I think his versatility and understanding about, you know, he's worked really hard to keep his weight down. And, and that helps, obviously, with his mobility. I think that's something that he has to just keep working on, being able to move and guard different people. Um, but really, the feedback, you know, for him was just, you know, keep really doing what he's been doing and keep improving. He did skip a year of high school, which is a little bit different. A lot of people will add a year in high school and go to a post-grad year and have five years in high school. He was in high school for three years. So he's still a very, very young, you know, guy in, in, in their eyes. So I just think just continue to do um, the same things he's been doing. I, I think less is more for him. I think when he lets things come to him, he's a more efficient player. Um, he's really worked on his, uh, his ability to score, whether that's in the mid post or shooting on the perimeter or shooting a pull up or uh, whatever. You know, he, he puts a lot of time into his game. I think when you have guys like that, it gets contagious. Okay, we're going to go uh, back in the red sweater along the wall. Hey, Coach. Uh, Brandon Carney, Michigan Daily. 
Uh, you guys added Spike Albrecht on a graduate transfer this mm -hmm. past summer, so I'm wondering what your impressions have been from him the first couple practices and what a guy with that sort of experience in the NCAA right. tournament in the Big Ten adds to your team. Right. Well, he's been great. Um, he's a good teammate. He's a good person, understands the game of basketball, um, can really pass. Anytime you have guys on your team that can pass and that gets contagious, um, it helps for good offense. And um, just brings a wealth of experience and understanding um, to the game. Still, you know, kind of getting back into the flow um, from his injuries that he's had. Um, but he's been very productive. His best basketball so far with us. Obviously, we had 10 practices in the summer because we went on our, our foreign trip. Um, but his best basketball so far has been in these practices. He's really played well. And uh, when he gets live, um, he, he knows how to play. And he knows how to... Uh, help his teammates and, and get everybody involved. So uh, we're very excited and very fortunate to have him. We're going to go front row right and then front row left. Uh, David Jones from PennLive.com. Matt, at the end of games last year, you mentioned you had some mm. trouble with the ball. Right. When you went back and looked at tape, right. did you see any kind of, uh, of uh, overall problem with your right. guys mentally or was it just not being able to functionally handle the ball well right. enough well we're I think a little bit of everything I, I don't think you can generally answer that question when you go back and watch film and we've we spent a lot of time it's about the only thing that we've ever had with a good team where when you work on something and you put more time into it you don't get any better and that doesn't that's a little bit <laughs> contradictory because anytime you put more time into something with a good team sometimes you could put more time into it if you just have a bad team you have a bad team we had a good team but we were a bigger team um, and with that being said we also had some people that they were at the guard positions that that wasn't their strength um, and, I, and I think with that being said it, it was at, at times it was just a little bit of everything you know guys weren't fundamentally sound guys maybe didn't cut hard to get open or guys didn't make a second cut to get open and then, then guys sometimes got caught up in the moment and didn't want the basketball that's the worst thing you can have against a zone so the, the thing that I've tried to do here with the scrimmage is we've scrimmaged teams now this is our second year and I really like that better than exhibition games as we went out and got Dayton two years ago because I thought, all right, we're going to have one of the biggest teams in the country. What's going to give us the most problem? And I thought like the interchangeable athletes at the three, four, and five, six, 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 seven type athletes would give Haas and Hammonds problems. And um, so we scrimmaged Dayton, and that was really good for us. So this year we went out and got West Virginia, which I believe is the best pressing team in the country, guys that are going to play hard, guys that aren't going to let you catch. So we put a lot of time on you know, our deficiency, so to speak. I do think with the additions and the departures, that we've had, we've already improved. And, um, and I think with the confidence of some of the guys that are returning, um, they'll be better at it. But it, it was something that was very frustrating, not just for coaches, but obviously our fans. Um, but we, we kept, the one thing I kept telling our guys is, you keep playing good teams and putting yourself in a good position. Let's don't lose that. That, that. That's a good thing to play a top 10 team in the country and be up by eight with three minutes to go. It's not a good thing to lose that and lose the game. Um, but you, you keep putting yourself in those positions and, and try to make improvements with it. We got time for one more question, front row left. Adrian Beecher with theskyboat.com. Coach, a lot of talk about the older guys in the program, but you got two freshmen on the team this year. What type of a role and what type of an impact do you think that, the, that Carson and Tommy will have this season? Yeah, well, I think Carson Edwards... Um, you know, has a chance to really impact our team. He was our second leading scorer um, on, on our trip to Spain. And so anytime you can, you can come off the bench, play half the game, and still, you know, be your second leading scorer, it is different. It is loose, um, you know, international basketball at that time of the year. You know what I mean? That sometimes the competition um, isn't the best, but he can really shoot the basketball. We, we got to be able to put him into positions where he's playing to his strengths. He's a very talented and athletic guy where he can put a lot of pressure on the basketball defensively. And so we're going to have him hawk the basketball um, and, and try to use that athleticism, but also learning our system, learning our system offensively and learning our system defensively. That doesn't come overnight. So the more he can make strides in that area, the more he'll get used um, because he is a weapon. He, you know, he's a very, very talented guy. That's all the time we have. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this year.